So what we have here is antique pleated organza. And this piece dates from probably the teens to 20s. And you can see here, there's two sides of paper and the interior has this beautiful tightly accordion pleated organza and slightly stiff inside um, and is all silk. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark this out because I'm going to make five inch wide trim for the underside of an 1880s gown. So you can kind of see this is the selvage edge and you can see there's kind of a line here. So you may not actually be able to see that in the camera but it's where the fabric stops and when it was heat pressed um, it formed like a fabric divot. So what we're going to do is I'm actually going to take a ruler and kind of Take this and if you move this like that, you can get a perfect tight line in there. Okay? Um, and so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark out where my selvage is. because it's nice to use the selvage because you don't have to um, seal that edge. So you end up with um, a finished edge that you don't need to do anything with. So now that I know where that's at, I'm gonna line it up right there. Perfect. Um, and I'm gonna measure five inches. So. Five inches is right here. So make sure that the line is measured up and then tightly put this down so that all the pleats are together. And I'm going to mark this piece off. But this isn't actually, um, there's going to be a space between the two. So uh, what you'll do is this will be your stitch line. So this is where you're going to sew. But you're going to go one inch down and you'll mark off your safe area for cutting. So what we'll do is we will sew along this line and this line, and then we'll actually cut down the center with pinking shears after we've sealed it. So we're gonna do all the marking and the sewing with the paper on. Then the paper comes off, and that will enable you to um, seal the finished edges uh, so that you don't have to worry about fraying. Usually with the ones between the stitches, I'll just use um, pinking shears or a pinking rotary blade. But the ones that you have to seal are the edges of your piece. So. This may seem a little odd. So our trim finished is going to be five inches long. Okay, so I'm actually going to measure out ten inches. So six to sixteen. Here we go. Like that. And again, kind of make sure that everything's lying flat. And I'm going to mark it. Right there. And again, 
So what have I just done? Okay. So this is the selvage line. So remember, that doesn't need to be finished. This portion here. We'll sew, sew, cut. So this will leave us a finished piece. But now we have this. And what that is, is these are both sewn. And if we measure five inches in, right in the middle, that's what we'll actually rotary cut. But we will sew this all first, take the paper off, and then I'll show you how you can essentially use a modified fray chap. They would often historically use gum arabic to prevent the fraying. I prefer a uh, diluted PVA solution, which is archival, so there's no darkening or acid issues, and it also keeps the stiffness to the pleats, I find, which is kind of nice. Um, and it can be ironed and worked on, etc. So it's not, you know, anything to be concerned about. But that's what I prefer to use. And again, so we have our dimensions here, and we're going to go from 17 to 27. there's going to be some overage here. This isn't five inches and it's not ten. So what we are going to do is measure off our five. So one, two, three, four, five, which would put us right here. Well, what the heck do I do with the rest of this? Well, the edges for these are often uneven because of how they were hand cut. So I've marked off a line here that I can sew along. And then when I cut these two, I'll end up with a shorter piece. These make the most beautiful cuffs ever. You can also use them for like the decorative front for like a decolletage. Um, but you'll end up with a slightly shorter one, but that's not a problem because you can always use it. So this is how we mark it. And then I'm going to take you on to how to sew. Okay, so one more piece of the puzzle, like how do you keep this all together and sew it? Because pinning this would take a million years. It's one of the reasons why I don't like making pleats, <laughs> because they can be so much prep work. So one of the nice things is you can keep everything together enough to feed it through the machine using masking tape. So if you try to run this through the machine as is, these are gonna to tend to accordion out and won't stay even. So what you need is a uh, yardstick, or I actually usually use a T-square for doing uh, drywalling because it's really heavy and it'll hold stuff in place, but if you apply good pressure to this, this will work really well too. So what I'm going to do is here's my sewing line. I'm just going to kind of slowly pull it together so everything's nice and tight so that everything is good and even. See, if I let off the weight, it un unfurls. So. It's often easier, either if you have something heavy or if you have an extra hand. So I'm going to put the masking tape about a half inch away from my seam line, which is right there. Uh, and the reason being is if you sew through the masking tape, you end up transferring uh, the adhesive onto the fabric, which is obviously not good. So once we're finished sewing, remember we're going to remove the paper anyway, so this portion isn't going to affect the uh, underlying integrity of, this, of the pleats. And then I'm going to repeat
here. Notice I'm using my knees a lot. And pull that together, lay it down, and then firmly tape that into place. And notice I'm always going with the grain of the pleats. Uh, generally, they're facing towards me because it's easier for me. And this is also how you're going to feed them through the machine. Um, okay, so the last one is the one down here at the bottom. And towards the edges, just because humidity and time can sometimes cause the pleats to loosen ever so slightly, I always like to make sure that the end portions are nice and tight. It'll be a lot easier because I don't have to worry about um, keeping the pleats together because they've already been smooshed together on this side. And then with the little tails that are wrapped around, I can see exactly where I need to put them because obviously I don't have these lines on the other side. So that's all good. So I'm going to just flip it over and repeat the process um, just to ensure that I have a nice flat line to work on and the pleats will stay nice and tight. So there we go. Okay, so I have arranged this so that I can more easily sew um, and also record. <laughs> so here I have my fabric. And see here, I don't know because the lighting is not showing up very well in the camera, but I did a little test bit here which is above my sewing line just to make sure that the bobbin thread and the top thread were the correct tensions because this is not something my machine is used to. Okay so I'm going to drop this and then the hardest part is like just getting it started and once you get that done want to be careful and ensure that the pleats are staying on the top going in the right direction. going through paper and fabric is actually a nice thing, especially with silks. So here is a finished seam. So what happens is the stitch seems almost like a perforation and it's pretty easy to pull out. And here's the bottom. And there's our final pleating, perfect, and everything. So let me go ahead and do some, the finish uh, stitching on this, and then I'll go through and show you guys how to finish it off. Okay, so what I've done is I have finished um, a section of this. Um, 
and this is generally what I'll do because most people's machines can't uh, fit in something so stiff and long. So right here what I'm doing is this is two completed lines that have been sewn. All right. We're going to eventually cut down the center here, but that's a little bit different because we need to make sure we uh, fray check that so it doesn't unravel. So I'm using pinking shears at the top here, which is going to be hidden by whatever your final seam is, but it will do the same thing as fray check and is a lot faster, although you can fray check this later if it's giving you problems, but it shouldn't because you're going to be putting it in almost immediately, hopefully, to your gown. Okay, so here is where I'm going to take off um, the paper side of it. So as you can see here, this is part that I took off before. See how perfect the pleats are? They're just, they're literally perfect. Um, so I'm going to go about getting this paper off here, and then I'm going to show you how to do the fray checking down the center line. Um, so let me do that. So what I have here is a mixture of one part PVA to two parts water. Um, and it's thin enough that it goes on easily, but it still provides the fray check action that we need. So I'm going to put this on, not too wet because you don't want it sopping through, and you're going to go underneath the little fold and make sure you get the upper portion because pleats have two sides. So all you do, and to let you know how I got it so that I know where I'm going to be fray checking, when I do about a half to three quarters of an inch, I laid this out and I left the papers on the ends so that I can tape it down. Um, and not have this shift. So if you remember previously, this is the end one that has like the two and a half, three inch um, piece and then the five inch one. So it says it's not exactly in the middle. What I did was I just marked out here so I can follow with my eye the line through and then just cover um, a portion on either side of that. Because when I go to um, cut it, I'm gonna use a uh, rotary cutter because it gives very clean even lines with pleats because you're pushing down on them versus trying to cut across which is not always a good thing and never one how you want it to turn out. So I'm going to just finish this part up. And then what I'm going to do is I will, across the grain of the pleat, kind of pull in the fabric a little bit. And not too much because I don't want to deform the pleats. But what I'm trying to do is I want to make sure that the glue is not going to dry uh, and keep my pleats sealed together because, you know, that would be bad. So I'm just going to finish with this bit here. And also make sure, I'm just noticing here, there's a little piece of paper on the other side. I'm going to skip that part because I need to reach under and get that bit out because uh, I don't want to glue paper to my arcanza. Alrighty, almost done here. And in some cases, you can actually leave the edge paper on. Um, until you're um, gonna, like, you can actually sew through it as well if you need some additional stabilization. Some machines do better with flimsy fabrics than others. Other one, other machines want like meat. Okay, so as you can see, like this part up here is pretty much dry, and you can't see it once it starts to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of puff the pleats up a little bit just so they're not like sticking together. And as this dries, I'll continue to manip manipulate these a little bit just to make sure. And the other thing about PVA is it's not like Elmer's glue. 
and it's actually a type of uh, plastic. So it, if you get it wet, it's not going to dissolve. Uh, in addition, um, the nice thing about it is, is if you run an iron over this after it's dry, it will actually crisp the pleats in even better because it's holding the edge kind of like very fine boning essentially, but for pleats. And I find that it helps to keep the structure really nicely. Plus, if you want to fan them out or make them ruffled, you can do the opposite. You can actually use steam and hold them open uh, and steam them in sections and you'll get a wavy, uh, a wavy pleated edge, which is really nice. So I'm going to just keep, you can kind of see where the fabric's sticking together a little bit, but here, literally, you can't see it. So I'm going to leave this all tacked together while it dries and I kind of keep making sure things are spread apart. And then I will get a rotary cutter. I don't like to move it um, before I cut it just because if you shift this at all, you could cut off the line that you made and the danger in that is that it will rapidly fray. So, okay, let me go ahead and do that. Okay. So we have our um, dried uh, pleating here, and what I'm doing is I'm lining up my yardstick so I have a nice straight edge, but again, I'm making sure that the pleats are nice and tight and lay flat and even. You'll get something called sawtoothing, where if you were to take this and pull it straight, it would look like little zigzags because of the way that the pleats were laying. So, I'm just going to do this size. And I cut away from the pleat. So the pleat is facing this direction. And it's just so that it doesn't get caught up. Rotary cutters are less likely to have issues, but still. They have a mind of their own. So I want to make sure that my weight is really firmly distributed. And I mean, this is silk. Organza, so it's not like you're cutting through denim, but still, you don't want to have to go back like a second time. And there we go. Beautiful, fray free edges. And this is how you do quick pleating. <laughs> I know it seems like a long process, but if you've ever tried to make, you know, these are like three pleats to an inch type uh, pleating, you know that it's not easy. So, ta-da!